Hello my loves, uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. Uh, so first off, before I begin uh, the video, I want you guys to um, stay tuned toward the end because I have a very um, important announcement that I have to make. Um, but for right now, I just want to focus on the main um, the main topic of this video. Now, as y'all know, uh, I wanted to start reviewing some of the brand new tarot decks that I just added to my collection. And in my last video, um, from what you guys saw, I, I reviewed the Salvador Dali um, tarot that I had gotten with beautiful artwork and um, and um, an awesome guidebook, you know, very detailed and um, it was just beautiful. Just the whole deck in general was just um, with beautiful imagery, artwork. I mean, I'm, I fell in love with it. Uh, and I really hope that... Um, after watching that video, you guys are inspired to go and, and get it. Um, so the next tarot deck that I have to show you guys is this. The Charles Dickens Tarot, um, which is another one added to my collection. Um, this is by Chris Leach, and this is available at um, Barnes & Noble. So we're going to go ahead with the inbox, with the um, unboxing and so I can show you guys um, the, um, the tarot cards. So as we open up the book, I mean up, open up the package, I'm sorry, um, here's the guidebook. So any fans out there of um, Charles Dickens and, and his books, I would really encourage you to get this. This is such an awesome awesome uh, tarot deck to have. Um, so let me just flip over to the um, to the major and the minor arcana. Uh, for example, uh, this one, Temperance, uh, and they use uh, characters from some of uh, Dickinson's novels. So the character here for uh, that represents Temperance is uh, Cecilia Sissy Jupe and Senor Jupe from the novel Hard Times. And um, so each of the characters represents a different card or um, from the major or minor arcana. Now, th now this is a different sort of uh, deck, so I guess the way that it that it all um, comes together. It's it's awesome. I mean, I was flipping through it, and I know when it when I got it the first time, uh, the first tarot deck that I got of this, uh, there were some cards missing, so I had to go and exchange it and get um, a, the same deck but with the different cards. I was missing a few cards, and it I guess it was just like a publication problem. Uh, because some of the cards that were in the deck, they were they were duplicates. Uh, but I went back and got a newer one, so I should have them all here. So just to uh, quickly go through. So here I have the nine. This is from the Minor Arcana. seeing the daughter now these are from the from the minor arcana so um, for example this one the main one is the ace of water and this depicts uh, the Thames River Here you have uh, John Jasper. And Strength. I don't know if you guys can see that. I know. The lighting is kind of bad in here. 
I love this one, Miss Havisham from Great Expectations. Now this is the seven. Um, I'm guessing either the seven of air, I want to say. Um, it's Little Nell's grandfather, so um, if you can see that, the imagery right there. This is Bradley Headstone, and if this is red, this is a fire symbol, because each element, each of the, the minor arcana, like the major cards, like the aces and what have you, um, they symbolize the four the four elements: uh, earth, air, fire, and water. Father, okay, Got See, like this, for example, um, the Ace of Air. So um, the lighter shade of blue is air, the darker shade of blue is um, water. And then, of course, you have Earth, which is the, um, the brown, like, taupe color. Um, and then also you have the element of fire, which the cards um, that have the red border um, those symbolize um, fire, the element of fire. Now when I first got these, I was kind of like trying to study them and see what, um, what I can get out of it. See like right here is the ace of fire. So. And here you have, this is one of my favorite cards. Um, the Lovers, which is um, depicted by um, Charles Dickens in his younger years um, and his wife. And here you have um, the Devil, which um, is, symbolizes poverty. And here they've used um, Oliver Twist to depict um, that particular card. The Tower. So these are some of the major and the minor arcana. Now, as you can tell, they're not really like in any specific order because um, I've already worked with them. I did, a, I did a reading, like a practice reading with them. Um, I've kind of got the hang of it with these cards. I guess this because it's different, like, I still need to get used to it, but, um, you know, it's just a matter of, like, practicing with them and, and seeing what, um, what messages these cards give out. And the way they're, that they're, um, that they're made is more, like, that they lay out, it's more, um, horizontal rather than vertical. Um... That's also something different about these cards. So. But very beautiful artwork. I mean, I love everything about this deck. I mean, I'm a huge, huge Charles Dickens fan. Um, I've, Oliver Twist is one of my favorites. Um, and then uh, my second favorite from his many books is um, Great Expectations. So, um, I was an English major in college, so when I saw these at Barnes & Noble, I had to have them. I also have another um, deck that um, features various uh, authors, which I'll show in a later video. This right here is... Uh, 
Mrs. Nickleby, um, and she is, she represents the Empress in this card. I mean, these are so beautiful and so unique. I, you know, not always thought like, you know, if they ever made a tarot deck with famous literary characters or different uh, fictional authors, you know, I would totally, totally buy it and look what happened. You know, the universe must have heard me and, you know, and then just came out with these. This is uh, the High Priestess. This is Ellen Turnin. She is also uh, from the novel Hard Times. The Hangman, uh, Sydney, uh, Sydney Carton, I believe. Yeah, uh, yes. Then you have the Four of Air, which is William Dorrit. The Ten of Fire, the Circumlocution Office. the world, which is the man himself, Charles Dickens, and all the characters that he created throughout his life from, from the novels that he wrote. The mother, which is Clara Pegatti. The father, Joe Gargery, uh, from Great Expectations. He's the one that, um, he is, um, Pip's uncle, but he raises him as his own, so that's why he's named as the father. Um, here you have Nancy, which is the um, eight of air. Now, I'm not really familiar with all of his books, um, mostly because I haven't read them all, but I've, I've read certain ones, and they're awesome. Some of them are really depressing, but I mean, if you're into that style of writing, you know, more power to you. The Star, which is Gad's Hill. The Moon, which is representative of, uh, the Mystery of Edwin Drood. Now, if you are a fan of Charles Dickens, you know that um, The Mystery of Edwin Drood was his last novel, and actually this was um, unfinished. So, if you watch uh, any documentaries on Charles Dickens, um, which I know there was one called, um, if there was a program you guys remember back in the 90s when they would show um, the Great Books Festival, uh, or Marathon, it was different, um, authors that they would highlight in some of their, their works, and in one episode they talk about Charles Dickens and some of his novels, and they mentioned that, um, his last novel was The Mystery of Edwin Drood, but he died before he could finish it, so he left the mystery unsolved. Um, but from what I understand, people that have read it um, say that, you know, like all his novels, it's really good, but um, it's open to interpretation. Um, I myself have never read it, so I don't know um, technically, you know, the plot or, you know, what it's about, but I'm going to have to look into it. Um, and then, you know, just judge for myself. And I, I kind of like those types of stories where you can draw your own conclusion as to what happens to the, the main characters. Um, because it leaves it open for discussion. The Ten of Air is Bill Sykes from Oliver Twist. Um, and as you remember from Oliver Twist, um, he's the one who 
tries to um, kidnap Oliver, but ends up um, hanging himself when he's cornered by the police and everybody trying to rescue Oliver. Um, he ends up um, hanging himself. Not intentionally, by accident. Ten of air. The two of fire. That's Martin Chuzzlewit. Old Martin Chuzzlewit. Four of fire. Okay. And this is Little Nell, um, represented by death. Um, I think she's in the novel Little Dorrit. Um, so another one that that's on my reading list. Okay. We're almost to the end, guys. This is again uh, Temperance. one is the three of water now it doesn't really say like what it is I mean but you can tell based off of the the border it's like a navy blue color um, so you'll know like the lighter blue is air the uh, dark navy blue is water and then you have fire and then it's um, which is of course red and um, earth which is like a um, brown taupe or beige uh, border. The mother who is Mrs. Clinton. Thomas Gradgrind. The daughter Stella from Great Expectations. Uh, Yarmouth, 10, 10 of water, um, and then next is Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim, the five of earth, um, Lady Owner Ryan Deadlock, Rosa Dartle, the five of water. And finally, we have the chariot. And here is um, Charles Dickens uh, giving a public, um, hosting a public speaking event. Or doing a, a public reading, because he would do that um, whenever one of his works was published. He would um, host public readings and he would read from his, uh, his works. Um, but there you have it. I mean, a lot of uh, really nice imagery. I love the artwork. I love, you know, the, the characters and um, how they all are, um, how they all are incorporated into this tarot deck. You can tell that a lot of work went into this. Um, putting everything together, making sure that um, they had every detail captured vividly in such a way that, you know, um, that it's like visually appealing. Um, but yes, I mean, if you're a big literature fan, I, and a fan of, of Charles Dickens in general, um, I would encourage you guys to go and get, uh, this particular deck. Again, this is the Charles Dickens tarot deck. It is by uh, Chris Leach, and it's available at Barnes & Noble. 
so that being said, uh, guys, moving on. Um, I really wanted to talk to you guys for a minute again about uh, something that um, happened um, not too long ago, like a few days ago. Um, and you know that, you know, I love you guys and I love all the commentary that I get from my videos. I love how it's um, making a positive impact on your, on your lives and uh, how y'all love to hear about the, the saints and all this, um, all this good stuff that I bring to you and I bring to the table. Uh, but, you know, every so often I will get a, um, a viewer or somebody, you know, troll, uh, who'll comment about my videos and, and say that I'm doing witchcraft or that I'm hurting other people and all this other, you know, stuff, this negative juju that I don't need right now. Um, and recently, uh, somebody had commented on a video that I made. It was uh, the one about um, the Nino de Atocha. And, you know, I read the, the comment and it said something to the effect of, um, I condone this, um, or no, I rebuke this channel um, or this um, depiction of witchcraft or in, um, in this channel, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ and what have you, you know, but of course you're going to get the really hardcore religious people who find fault in what I'm doing and I really don't see anything wrong with it because I'm not, I've told you guys before, I'm not doing this to hurt people, I'm not doing this to um, upset anybody or like ruffle anyone's feathers, I mean, these are experience that, experiences that I've had growing up. Um, I'm, I'm a very spiritual person, I'm very religious, I come from a religious family background, um, and I love talking about um, the saints and the lives of the saints and what have you. Um, I do have other saints that I want to discuss, um, but I need to make a list of, of saints I've already covered and saints that I want to cover, and others that I want to do a second part um, from a previous video that I've discussed um, but when people start doing and saying things like that about me that I'm doing bad things to to people and um, you know and what have you like I all I do all I can say to that is if you believe that that's what I'm doing then why are you even on my channel commenting on it it's just the fact that like you took the time to stop and comment and just to say that just to kind of um, ruffle my feathers and see how how mad you can get me. I mean, I'm. it takes a lot to get me mad. Um, but if I'm getting positive feedback from this, then it's not that big of a deal to me. I mean, you can say whatever you want and I really don't care because other, because Really what I do is I just block the comment and I report it and if it gets taken down, good. Um, I don't have time to be responding to negative comments and, and you know, all that because of the positivity, the positive um, comments that I'm getting from my other viewers and how it's helped them improve their lives. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you don't have anything nice to say, then um, why even bother commenting in the first place? Because you're, I mean, you're just wasting your breath. Um, I do not do any sort of work that I feel could either harm somebody or, um, or that person like in or the person doing the work. Um, because I'll give you an example, and I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos. When I had my store um, a few years back, I had a client come to me and say, um, oh, well, I need a candle lit for, the, for this request or for this uh, purpose. And which, of course, you know, I was glad to help, you know, because he was looking for a job and I gave him, you know, the, um, the novena. I, gave, I recommended a saint, which was St. Joseph. I dressed the candle for him and, 
you know, within three days of him doing what, what I had told him to do, he got the job that he had interviewed for. So what happened was that the next time that I spoke with him, um, he wanted to go the extra mile and thought, okay, well, if you can help me get a job, then you can also help me bring back somebody that I used to um, go out with. Um, now, sorry guys, I just got a notification and every so often I just, um, I get pop-ups and it's really annoying, but um, other than that, um, so yeah, he thought that because I um, helped him get a job, that, you know, he thought, okay, well, I can go that extra mile and see if he can help me win back the love of my life. Okay, fine. You know, there's things that I can help you do, prayers to different saints that I can recommend. Um, but you yourself have to do the work. I mean, I can tell you what to do and how to do it. But in the end, at the end of the day, it's up to you. So he wanted me to do a love spell on this woman and I told I told him there are repercussions to things that you know that can come from doing a love spell and I told him I said you can either get a stalker out of her like she can turn on you she can stalk you she can end up hating you she can um you might end up like in a abusive relationship or like let's say for the sake of argument that you do get her you do get the woman that you want but you're not able to hold her down. You know, like she's one of those that she goes from relationship to relationship or like she's she's not one to settle down. Or what if she already has somebody and this person that she's with is violent? I mean, you don't know that. And that's why I had, I had stressed to him and I stress to all my viewers, if you are going to do a love spell you need to know the repercussions that come from it. Um, you are solely responsible for your own actions. So if you want to do it, fine. I'm not, I'm not telling you, you know, not to do it, but it's just a friendly warning. You know, just be cautious of what you're doing. And for some people out there who think that I'm, you know, practicing witchcraft and I'm, you know, doing this to hurt people. I don't do this type of work to hurt people. If anything, I do it to help them. Um, because I know a lot of my viewers, you know, suffer from depression. I have viewers that have trouble finding jobs. I have viewers that um, need help with their family. They have family issues. I mean, any aspect of life I can help you with, except for that. I'm not going to hurt somebody because you're mad at them for whatever reason. I don't do that because I believe in the karmic rule, which means that whatever I do to somebody and whatever anybody does to, to somebody that has wronged them, it comes back to you. Um, so this person in general, I told him, I said, I, you know, I believe in the karmic rule. I don't do this type of work, but I can get you the materials and you do it yourself. And, you know, he was adamant that he wanted me to do it and he would pay me and this and that. And I said, I don't want any kind of payment. I mean, I can get you the materials, but you're going to have to set it up yourself. And but like I said, you know, I don't do that kind of work because that's dark work. And as with any dark work, if you're not careful what you're doing, it could come back to you. And that's how I feel, you know, if somebody asks me to do that type of work for them, I always tell them no. Um, so what I do is I don't, I don't do witchcraft. I don't, I don't practice it. I don't, um, I mean, other people that do, that's fine. You know, that's, that's their business. But for me, you know, I work with saints. I, I talk about saints. I show you rituals that you can do at home. Um, you know, and if, and if they help you, fine. And if they don't, um, if it doesn't work for you either, there's a reason behind it, you know, either because God is telling you 
that it's not time yet or it's going to happen but gradually or people just do it because um they um they're, they're impatient so and they want it to happen real quick and it, it doesn't work like that it's it's a process you have to keep praying to the saint and develop a relationship with them in order for them to take on take on your case so to speak um but other than that yeah i mean if you guys see any any bad comments um let me know i mean i would like to have some moderators who can watch my feed and um and see if there's any um, trolls that are trying to bring you guys down or bring like negativity or what have you because I don't need that right now. I really don't. Um, all I want to do is help you guys. And for somebody to go in and say, oh, well, you're practicing witchcraft, you're doing all this and hurting people, that, I'm sorry, but that is just a bunch of bull. That's BS. And I don't have time for that. So if you... Um, if you guys want to, you know, be on the lookout for any trolls that try to sneak in and, you know, comment on my videos, uh, negative comments, report it um, immediately so that it can be taken off. Because I hate when I, and I hate to use that word because it's, it's such an ugly word, but I, I mean, since there's no other word to describe it, but I hate the fact that People are trying, people like that are trying to bring me down with their negativity. I mean, you have your beliefs and I have mine. What works for me works for me, vice versa with you. I don't tell you how to live your life. I don't tell you, you know, what religion you should practice or what type of ritual work you should do. That's on you. That's up to you what you want to do. But if it comes back to you, you're the only one that, um, you know, that's to blame because either you didn't do something right or um, you know you didn't listen to what someone else told you um, and that that's all I can say but other than that guys those of you that have gotten positive results from my work from the rituals that I do um, that you have done as well um, that's awesome you know I, I love hearing success stories of different saints that you you guys have invoked and how it's made your lives better and how these saints are calling out to you guys and they want to work with you. That's so awesome. I, I love it. Uh, and I appreciate everything that you guys do for me. So um, as always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And um, I do encourage you to get that tarot deck. It, once again, uh, it's the Charles Dickens Tarot by Chris Leach, and it's available at Barnes & Noble. So uh, that being said, thank y'all so much for um, for joining me tonight, for sitting with me and and uh, chatting with me or listening to me ramble on. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Um, good night, I love you all, and God bless.